Hello everyone, this is Direwolf20, and welcome to episode 85 of Direwolf20's Let's Play series. I'm just over here doing a little bit of uh, magical work with my whole... Uh, oh, cool, it worked. So I set up the computer, similar program that we have in the basement, to turn off the kinetic compressor when we reach a certain point. Now there's something you should note about the advanced pressure gauge, and I'm going to show you that right now. Uh, the pressure gauge has a different formula for the normal one and the advanced one. So the normal one, it's two times the pressure as the redstone signal strength. Um, with the advanced one, it's two-thirds of the pressure is the redstone signal strength. So right now, I'm still measuring for seven, and it looks like it stopped right around pressure gauge. Uh, what is that, like a little more than ten probably? That's what it looks like. Pressure, yeah, twelve bars. Okay, cool. So right around twelve bars is where it stopped. So twelve bars, it's emitting a signal strength of eight because two-thirds of 12 is 8, and then I'm looking for 7. So that's actually not a bad number to go with for our charging station. It's pretty cool, and it'll work for us. Also, the drone. I need to do a little bit of stuff. Uh, there's a bug in the current version. Oh, cool. It's automatically filling up my pressure wrench when I'm standing on top of it. That's kind of neat. I guess that's because of the upgrade that's in there? I don't even know. Come here, you. Uh, what I need to do is add an item life upgrade to this guy because there's a bug in the current version of uh, the mod here and uh, I need to upgrade the drone. That looks cool. So I'm not going to worry about security upgrades. We discovered last episode we don't really need to worry about that. Volume is not a deal. If we want this guy to move faster, we could speed upgrade him, but I'm not too sure I need that. Uh, we don't need the dispenser, but item life is cool because it gives them the ability to self-repair. Uh, the bug is built around the drones and the flying ability. Anybody who's switched from creative mode to normal mode in uh, Minecraft here is pretty familiar with sometimes if you're hovering just above the ground and you touch the ground, you will take fall damage. Well, believe it or not, the same thing happens to the drone. So that's a bug that's fixed in the next version, and I think uh, version 1.2.4 of the Direwolf 20 pack or 1.0.24 is going to have a fix um, that will make it so that he no longer takes fall damage, but for now your best uh, option there is to take that upgrade and install it, because what that'll do is it'll let the drone self-repair, and uh, anytime he takes any damage, it'll just repair himself and he'll be fine. The other thing I wanted to show you guys is a big old dire derp from last episode here. Dun, 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 dun. Remember when I was trying to figure out why the pneumatic helmet wasn't able to detect the drone? Well, that's because I had that filter still on that had like, you know, I think TTT or something like that. I'm sure, you know, a lot of you guys mentioned it. So you can see here when we acquire the target of the drone, uh, we can see all kinds of cool information. So we can see the drone's health, uh, its current pressure, etc, etc. And its current uh, owner is Direwolf20. You can also see like a little floating icon there that indicates what the drone is currently doing. So right now he's executing the, the dig command and when he does that you can see he's executing uh, this command here which shows that uh, inventory export. So right now he's over there trying to do the inventory export. How cool is that huh? We drop an item on the ground within his uh, pickup area and he should, we'll see, goes for that item pickup. So see how the item pickup icon just kind of hovered over it? And now he's just kind of sitting right here cycling through all his jobs. So it's really pretty cool uh, if you think about it, how neat that looks. Um, so pretty cool. Nice to see exactly what he's working on. We'll see here too when, uh, when uh, a bit of growth occurs. There it goes. You can see that dig command is floating over. There it goes. It goes to the pickup and then it goes to item export. So you can see exactly what the drone's doing, what it's thinking about, and how it's working. So it's a good way to keep track of what this drone is currently doing. And I wonder if I stand on this thing if it'll fill up my pressure on my helmet. Yeah, it does. Look at that. Cool. Just by standing on this thing, it fills up my helmet pressure. Nice. I like that. All right, so that's uh, drones. We'll definitely be using them for a few things here. They're pretty useful, as you can see. Um, I might do a couple things. I'm, I'm considering throwing another drone in over there, right over into here. Um, for item pickup because obviously my golem disappeared. I don't know where he went and uh, I'm wondering if I might have more luck with drones than with golems. Uh, the other thing is I could have a drone that's both in charge of attacking any entities and that's in charge of uh, item pickups. So I don't even have to worry about the whole system of, you know, what's going on with drones and everything. So let's turn on auto run. Um, I haven't set up a startup program for that just yet, but I do want auto run to kick off and start clearing up stuff. I'm going to take off my helmet. And we'll get started with today's episode. Be right back. 
Alright guys, we are back, and one of the things that I've found is that this little setup is not going to be sufficient for me uh, with all the cool pneumatic craft stuff that we've been playing with recently. Like, obviously this is working, but we've got a small 3x3 pressure chamber we could definitely do with a larger one. Uh, this whole setup has kind of been slow and clunky, and, you know, we, I'd like to get some upgrades in here. I'd like thicker tubes because, you know, I'd like to be able to charge things better. I've got a drone in here because I want to use drones to set up my new pneumatic craft area. I want to have a new area that's going to be right below this area here right downstairs and I've kind of dug out an area and prepared a programmer over here so let's get started taking a look at um, how we can get this drone to clear out the area for us and then I'm going to build a whole pneumatic craft room that's going to have all the pressure stuff and it's going to have a couple pressure chambers I'd like to have full automation of pneumatic craft when I'm done and I'm also hoping to get uh, a nifty new item so first off is this drone done filling up yeah it seems pretty good to me all right let's take him and program him with something new and cool all right, so the first thing I want to do is probably dig out the area that's right underneath me. And I'd like to make it about the same size as this room. So I'm going to start off with one GPS unit here, and the other one's going to be right here, and then we can get him programmed. But instead of that, I want to have, no, not you, you. And then if we don't click on any blocks, let's go down a few levels. Let's say like, I don't know, 52, and I might wind up changing this, we'll see. But down to like 46... Eh, let's do like 44. That'll get us a nice area. And then we can program this guy. Alright, so obviously we want to dig out an area, but before we get started with that, I also have a chest sitting here ready to go, and I want to show you what that's about. I'd like to first have an inventory export, or import actually. So import from inventory, what this guy's going to do is it's going to pull items out of an inventory into the uh, inventory of the drone. Uh, what I want to do is designate an area, but before I do that, I might as well program the area that I just set up. So we're going to do a dig area uh, as well. And we're going to go ahead first off and set the area coordinates here. So we'll just do this guy and this guy. So that's the area it's going to dig out. Everything in between there. And it's the filled area that it's going to get dig dug out. All right, so that's cool. We'll leave that area set up. Um, now for the inventory, I'm just going to shift right click this guy like I did with the inventory before and we're going to set both GPS's uh, or both GPS points to the same thing so when we show area on it we'll see the green square inside so what this will do is it'll have the drone pick up the item first so I'm going to put a diamond pickaxe in here and we're going to have this drone get programmed. Now hopefully I've got all the program puzzles I need. I do. So what he should do is now grab the diamond pickaxe and start mining. The um, drones will use the diamond pickaxe and they'll clear the area faster based on the fact that they have a diamond pickaxe. So let's see. Nice. He grabbed it and where is he going? Is he going to refuel? I guess. Alright. He's probably trying to find a way down there. Yeah, that's where he's going. So we'll be back in a few minutes, guys, once uh, we've followed him and uh, he's cleared out the area. You know what, guys? I have kind of an idea. Bear with me a minute here. Let me snag this guy. Come back here. Uh, drone. Cool. As you can see, I'm now filtering entities by the word drone. A mob is targeting me. That's not good. Let's get out of here. Uh, I would like to try. I wonder if he's going to use my dire hammer. Let me charge it up real fast. Go in there, would you, Dire Hammer? Let's see what happens. As you can see, he's been drawing, he's been clearing out a bit of the space down there. I'm just kind of experimenting with how good a job he does, but if he can use the Dire Hammer, that'll be nuts. All I have to do is stick it in the chest and then say, hey, you drone, go have fun. Well, he picked it up, that's for sure. Let's see if he's gonna clear space like he has a hammer in his inventory. Hmm, doesn't look like it. He is mining faster, so that's good at least, but he's not doing a 3x3. Three three. Alright, that was worth a shot. Alright guys, let's try something new now. I'm going to map from here all the way up to this cobblestone block. And let's see what we can come up with. Obviously I've got my thing set up here, so if we were to change this out, I'm going to just remove this whole thing. And instead of doing a dig, now I want to try out the place function. So first, before we do a place, probably shouldn't have killed that thing but that's okay we'll uh inventory import and we'll set up the area for that in a minute but first i want to set up the area for the placing of things so let's right click select gps1 select gps2 and take a look at what that area is going to look like well obviously that's a mess we don't want to fill that whole area do we no sir so let's change that all we have to do is set it to i think walls and show area now and what we should see is oh that's cool 
Look at that. That looks really good, actually. I think that will be perfect. I think the Y, though, on this one needs to go down one. Let's try that. So let's change this, and we're going to change GPS 1. And it's still going to be walls, and let's show that area now. Oh yeah, that's what I'm talking about. So I want to fill that in so that it fills in kind of like the walls here. It covers everything up. It'll just make everything look kind of cool. Um, do I want to fill it in one level lower? Uh, you know what? Maybe I do. Maybe I'll have this elevator be up one just so that everything looks nice and smooth stoned and, and fancy. So yeah, as a matter of fact, once again, I'm changing my mind and we're going to make it that. All right. So area U, go in and show area. Cool. So that area is going to get filled in by the drone, in theory. Uh, now we just have to set this guy for the area here. One and the same one. That would be you. Cool. So we don't want the pickaxe in there, obviously. You can see I've prepared for this by filling it with stone. So now note, by the way, that we are um, about to export. So already we just... Uh, have most of the programming puzzles we need in here. So we're just putting a new place in. So you can see required programming puzzles place. I've already crafted it. And uh, returned programming puzzle is dig. So I get dig back. Cool. So let's get this guy going. Now he should be able to pick up about a stack at a time. So you can see he did that. And he's pretty smart. Let's see where he goes. And uh, if we take a look, we'll see what happens. There he goes. Oh, nice. He's placing them well. Uh, now, he is going to go back upstairs. Let's see. Well, I assume he's going back upstairs. I don't know what he's doing. I guess he's placing stuff up there now. Oh, wait. I know where he's probably going. He's probably pathfinding to recharge himself. Yeah, he is. I did put a dispenser upgrade on this thing uh, so that he can refuel himself with air. So that's what he's doing. And I don't know how many blocks he's placed, but what he should do is after he's finished placing the blocks that he's placed, he should come back. In fact, I'm going to recharge my uh, pneumatic helmet a little bit here, too. And he should go back to work. Come here, pneumatic helmet. That's probably enough for now. And let's watch Mr. Drone. There he goes. Nice. Mob's attacking me. That's cool. Now, where'd he go? There he is. Acquiring target. Cool. Ah, there he goes. He's going back downstairs. So he probably just grabbed another stack of uh, stuff, and you can see there's the puzzle piece bounce, and that's where he's going to start placing blocks next. Look at him go. Nice job, drone. All right, you have fun with that. We'll be back in a few minutes when he's finished filling in this area, and we have a nice-looking room. There he goes. He's probably going to refill again. Yeah, he's got about one bar. I didn't really let him refill too well. All right, guys, we're back for a minute just to let you know that the drone is doing a really nice job. I did throw an item life upgrade into him just because he was taking fall damage as well. As we know, that's kind of a little bug right now, but otherwise, things are going well. He's uh, obviously doing a pretty nice job um, building up the walls of this room, and in the end, it's going to look pretty nice, I think. Oh, yeah. All right. You know what? I don't need this torch here, so I'll get rid of it, and that'll probably make him go in and fill that in, too. All right. Looks like he is going to fill up his inventory. Good drone. Nice. See how cool these things are? You can do a lot of neat automation with these drones, to be honest with you. Uh, now, I don't have my helmet on, so I'm not seeing what he's working on. But if I did put it back on, we would see exactly what he's trying to do. And it looks like he's actually almost done filling in this basement area. That's cool. Yeah, so you can see the individual block placements that he's doing. We can see now he's decided to come over here and place a block. That's one of my favorite features, is being able to see that. That is just cool to me. Good drone. All right, like I said, back in a few. You know, guys, I gotta say, drone did a nice job down here. Look at that. It's looking nice. So now we've got a nice room to do all our cool um, pneumatic craft stuff. Let's get to work. All right, guys, silly dyer is silly. I deconstructed all this stuff and then realized I forgot to craft one of the things I need, which is some of these advanced pressure tubes. So now that I've got them, we're ready to go downstairs and start having fun. So what I'd like to do is I'm thinking at the back of the room here, I'm going to have a couple of these pressure chambers. And I'd like to have them fully automated so that I don't have to constantly swap out the um, the, the recipes and ingredient things. So that's why I'm going to have two of them. Um, now that's going to be one. And I'm going to stick with three by three. I actually looked into it and uh, decided 
decided that there's real no reason to go with 5x5. Five five. It, it basically gives you more overall air in your network, so there's really no good reason to go for it. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just stick with 3x3 um, three three for now. So that should be cool. Um, remember, the windows are optional, but I always kind of like having a way to look in and see what's going on in there. So we'll do this. Do I actually want this to be, or do I want it to be? Well, you know what? Yeah, I'm going to I'm gonna break this. I'm, I'm going to have it coming out of the floor, because I, I do like to be able to walk right up and look right in, and I'm not going to be able to do that if the window is one block below where my head level is. So let's clear these out. There we go, and put this guy back. So it'll basically be, this will be that. Arg, didn't mean to do that, sorry. They just look so similar. There we go. And then we can put the chamber windows here. Here. We're going to have our item input here. And I'm probably going to wind up having my pressure chamber valve be right here. Cool. And that should form. And I'm going to throw my item life upgrade in there. Cool. And we're going to want another one of those item life upgrades, but we'll get to that. In the meantime, let's put this here. And we'll repeat that. And you'll note that I now have, um, if I did this correctly, probably enough room for a third chamber if I really want it. But we'll see if that ever becomes a need. Oh, darn. All right, let me fix this. Uh, you know what? I bet. I wonder if I can hammer this thing. That'll make for an easy fix. Ha! Nice. <laughs> All right, let's do this proper now. And then what we'll have, again, is the window on the front and back. But this time I want the interface here, and I want the... There we go. So now the pressure can come up there. And if I really wanted to, I could have a third one in the center here. We'll see if it gets to that point. Um, but then what we're going to have is the advanced pressure tube and some other pressure tubes. So here's where the real trick comes in. I'm going to show you guys what I mean by this in a minute, what I mean by the real trick, because this is where it gets nifty. We're basically going to want a couple things. First off, we also want to have, maybe I'll have my assembly line right here. That would kind of be cool. So the assembly line could be right in the middle. That's five blocks across in between those two. What's this thing? One, two, three, four, five. Nice. That is awesome. If I had inventory space, I would be really excited right now. But we'll come back for that. Um, so we'll probably want to have like a connection here, and that'll be towards the, the start point of the whole system. But we'll also go underground. So let's go there. And we're going to want to run under here and hook up our pressure. And this is basically going to run underground. And let's see. Like this. Yeah. This will be cool. So we're going to have advanced pressure tubes running over here, right? And this is what's going to have high amounts of pressure. Because remember, you can have, you know, different amounts of pressure running through. High pressure tubes can handle more. But we want to make sure because um, some of the machines that are going to be over here are not going to be able to handle the pressure amounts that we're going to have set up. So, for example, uh, the pressure chambers, we can only get up to five. And the same is said for uh, this machine right here. It can only accept up to five. And when it gets that high, we're going to be in trouble. So how can we manage to have um, the whole network powered? Well, for that, we're going to want to look at a special type of tube called, I think it's the restriction tube? Regulator tube, that's it. So let's see what's involved in making a regulator tube. So we're going to want the advanced pressure regulator, this guy. 
and it just needs a couple of safety valves. So we're going to need at least like four of these. And we're going to want one, two of these. And then we're going to want this guy. Cool. Uh, this regulator tube is going to prevent a certain amount of air from going through uh, the system based on a redstone signal. So let's go ahead and get some redstone. I'm going to grab a bunch of it so that we're ready here. And we're just going to run downstairs. And I'm not going to do this with the computer because I feel like that would probably be overkill because it's always going to be a certain amount that we want. Let's look at the math on it. You ready? Uh, so I'm thinking uh, 12 is the number I want here. 22 Point five minus the redstone strength times 12. Um, all right, so that's some math time. So if it's 12 times 1.5, that's 18, right? And 22.5 minus 18 is 4.5. So I'm right, redstone signal strength of 12 is what we want to apply here. So in fact, let's remove this. We're going to have the advanced pressure regulator be right here. And then, will this guy connect? He will not. So we're gonna need the advanced pressure regulator to be right here, and the pressure tube here, okay? And hopefully I've got my manometer somewhere. So we want redstone signal strength of 12, right? So it's 15, 14, 13, we want it one further. There we go. Pressure strength of 12. Nice. Now if only I built my way out of here. Cool. So that should prevent, because it's an advanced pressure regulator tube, um, more than four and a half bars of pressure from going through into there. So let's see what happens. You ready? We're going to turn this on in a moment. Uh, what I do also want to do is connect up some redstone energy conduits and run this through the wall right around here-ish. Uh, we might have to go a little further. There we go, now we're talking. So it's probably going to be like right... Don't know why I'm having so much trouble finding this thing. Let's just go down from here. Now we're talking. So orange is export mode, so we're going to be exporting power. right into there like that. Nice, right? And this thing should already be running, which is good news for us. So what I want to see is this thing build up and get above four and a half, and we'll know that we've got that much in there. Let's go ahead and put away some items that we don't need at the moment, because my inventory is going nuts, and get out that little tool that we're going to want. There it is. Cool. So this will be used to uh, test the threshold. So this is pressure 0.5. Oh, there we go. Regulator tube threshold, four and a half bars. Nice. So I did do that math correctly. Cool. So this thing should not let any more than four and a half uh, bars of pressure into this area. And any tubes in this area will not explode, which is exactly what we want. So let's see. We'll be back in a minute once this builds up pressure. By the way, I wanted to show you guys the omnidirectional hopper. This is also from Pneumaticraft. It's basically the same recipe as a hopper with a... Um, there we go. No, not like that. Come here, you. There we go. Cool. What's nice about it is it has a proper bounding box, so I can interact with the uh, pressure chamber interface uh, however I want. And I could also, I think... Yeah, there we go. Sweet. But you can see it's still connected to the side of the block like it's supposed to be, right? So I made a couple of these guys. Now I can continue to interact with this thing um, in much the same way as I did before. And that is cool. Let's 
grab a couple chests. One, two. So we can kind of do that. Hey, what's your problem? There we kind of go. Nice. All right, you can also see I set up a computer here. It's currently measuring the uh, current amount of pressure inside the tube. You'll note that the kinetic compressor is set to high signal. So this guy will read the pressure. And remember, it's a different calculation for the advanced pressure tube. So keep that in mind. All right, so, so far, so good. Got item life upgrades in these things. Let's set up the, um, let's set up a chest to be the import export of this area. So I'm going to need some item ducts. I think I can manage that, right? Item ducts. I could probably go with a few more item ducts. Ah. Better craft a little bit more hardened glass. Back in a minute. All right, guys. The main reason I wanted these um, two uh, pressure chambers here is so that one could be designated for the item begins with or contains uh, plastic or whatever like that. So I might do just items for the types of plastic that I go with normally, but for now I'm going to set this guy to plastic. I'm thinking one's going to be like the, the lower tier stuff, like compressed iron, plastics that I do commonly, uh, that kind of stuff, and the other one's going to be the higher tier stuff, because the problem is like when I put compressed iron into the machine, oh look, it's at 4.5, nice, and it's not going any higher. Perfectly exactly at 4.5, not going any higher, same thing for you, but this thing's obviously still spinning, filling up air pressure, awesome, nice. I like it. All right, what was I saying? Stuff about things. Right, yeah. Um, so we'll see. I'm just going to basically kind of find as efficient as a way to do what I want to do. Um, oh, yeah, I should probably. There we go. Cool. I don't haven't yet crafted the uh, stuff, so obviously I don't have enough item ducks. So let me go get a few of them. And then we'll be almost done with this setup down here, which is obviously going to be a lot cooler than what I've already got set up. There we go. We'll set you to export items. And we'll configure the items on this guy in a minute, uh, what he's allowed to export. But it'll be stuff like, you know, like we're used to. So now both those things can export, and it should work pretty well. Oh, yeah, and I should probably set these guys to low. I always like to have a little bit extra navigation room downstairs, so that if I do need to get down here and do work, I can. And low. Cool. All right, so... This is starting to look nice, right? And there's a lot more machines we're probably going to want to have that need higher pressures. So overall, this is going to be a very useful system because we're going to be able to maintain those higher pressures. Cool, right? Now, I might even wind up replacing these pressure tubes with the advanced ones. Once I get a few more advanced pressure tubes, I'm just using the, the, the smaller ones for now. But I'll probably have advanced ones all throughout the system. Just wanted to demonstrate that you could use smaller ones here because we've got that filter. All right, guys, so I think this is good for now. I've got my charging station here ready to go. I'll even throw a couple speed upgrades in there. I have more speed upgrades than I need anymore, but that's okay. Do like the omnidirectional hopper with the bounding box. You can even see you can upgrade the item transfer speed per uh, how many items per second. You can uh, have a redstone behavior here so it can interact with redstone. You can even get a few upgrades in just like the speed upgrade, so that'll let you transfer more items per tick. Nice. Um, this thing is obviously still running, but he should should be getting to the point here because if I program this computer correctly, I told it to stop when the redstone signal strength gets to 12. Remember I said the advanced pressure gauge has a different calculation here. So let's see, advanced pressure gauge, two thirds of the pressure of bars, right? So I said I wanted to get up to 18. So two thirds of 18 is 12 because 18 divided by three is six times two is 12, right? So 
12 is the redstone signal strength that I want it to stop at because 12 redstone signal will equate to 18 uh, pressure of bars. And we're actually really close to that number right now. It shouldn't be too much longer. Obviously, there's a lot of air flowing through the system because we have a large, um, the advanced pressure tubes, they hold a lot more air than the uh, smaller ones. So that's why it's taken so much longer to get there. But we should actually be about to pass that point, 18 bars of pressure. And I'm hoping that this thing will turn off now. Please turn off. Please turn off. Yes, nice, look at that. The computer detected that it's at 12 and it automatically turned off the compressor before any explosions occurred. Nice. So uh, we will hold off here. Uh, let me just make sure that uh, this thing, yeah, he should run pressure on startup, right? Let me just reboot. Yeah, he does, cool. So what we'll have here now is a nice automated system. Um, we will be back next episode to start checking out some of the other cool blocks and toys you can have with Pneumatic Craft. There's a couple things I wanna check out. Uh, something that can mess with player inventories is something I'm excited about. I do also want to automate a few more things down here. Um, obviously, we're gonna have all the output of items go into this chest, both from the assembly controllers and from the pressure chambers. So overall, a pretty nice system. All right, guys, for now, Direwolf20 signing off. Hope you enjoyed the episode. Take it easy.